welcome back. Let's take you to the story of a woman who climbed up on the Statue of Liberty in New York and sat on the monument's base while well, she has been charged with trespassing. 44-year-old Therese Okumo, originally from Congo, is a naturalized U.S. citizen. She was protesting against President Trump's zero-tolerance policy on immigration. Well, tourists were evacuated from Liberty Island in New York Harbor during the three-hour standoff involving local and federal authorities. She, however, pleaded not guilty to charges of misdemeanor trespassing and disorderly conduct in a Manhattan court. Ms. Okumu, donning a t-shirt emblazoned with the words white supremacy is terrorism, told reporters outside the courthouse that she scaled the landmark in an impromptu protest. In recent times, Nigeria has seen an increasing number of startups and others, you know, talking about technology. Well, with regards to this and the build-up, the complaint of lack of support by relevant authorities and a friendly environment. Well, our guest today, Oladi Pupo Adebowale, is a team representative at GCL Hub, and he is here to share his thoughts on how we can change the narrative. He's also the founder of Ilewe Education. Welcome to the program. Nice to have you. All right. Thank you for having me. So, um, are you happy with the development of startups in the ecosystem? Um, I'm, I must say, I'm not unhappy, but uh, I must say that. There's a lot that can still be done. Um, a lot of our products, a lot of the technology services that we have today are locally used. Um, we need more people to patronize our services locally so that the global world can see what we're doing and they can also benefit from what we're doing in Nigeria. How much more can we do, especially developing the Nigeria brand and, you know, take, take Yabacon, you know, example. as it's so fondly called? Okay, so, I mean, what we need is more of synergy. We need more synergy. Um, in Yabacon, we have Yabatech and Unilag who can provide a lot of hardware expertise. And the Yabacon deals solely with software, right? So more synergy would provide um, Yabacon with a lot more products coming out from locally. Uh, we need a lot of more research and development funding that will be pumped into these universities that would aid, help um, the, 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 the development of our own hardware. Um, Yabatech recently purchased um, a software, for instance, for plagiarism. That's something that I believe that we could have done here in Nigeria. But um, we're not there yet. So, I mean, I'll be happier when, when we get to that level. Yes, Yabatech did that. Yeah, they purchased purchase, stuff. Yes, for okay. plagiarism. So, okay. I mean, they don't want students to copy projects yeah. and um, uh, other uh, confidential um, okay. intellectual properties online. So, they purchased that. That was announced by the chairman of, I believe, the ICT recently. But I also read a report that ABA is also coming up and might soon challenge Lagos as the hub. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very happy. Um, anybody that knows me knows that everything I wear is made in Nigeria. Um, it wasn't always like that, but as I grew up, as I grew older, I realized that supporting our very own here in Africa, it, it, it's not easy. A lot of times, a lot of people have disappointed me, especially when we buy our um, ready-to-use shoes and all that. But um, I believe that we need to support our very own. That's what made that's what makes Asia the number one economy today. Asia supports Asia. Uh, WeChat uh, is what is used in Asia and China particularly. Um, NASPAS generates billions from that alone, and we still use WhatsApp here. Was to say that um, a young man in Andela or in CC Hub or in GCL Hub cannot create the next big thing that will go global. So those are the things that will help our economy. But partnership is also something that has worked for international big, you know, firms, tech yeah. firms. Is this something you would also recommend? Yeah, us? I mean, uh, at GCL, that's what we, that's what that's our interest. That's what we, that's what we sell to people. That's what we want our, our young people to believe in. Um, we thrive through partnerships. Um, in GCL, we have. Startups like Ilewe Education, Life Media, Without a Box, companies that are creative, companies that are, are passionate about doing something different in Nigeria. And those are the things that we need right now. Someone said that there are a number of brilliant coders, uh, which I'm sure they are, and yeah. programmers as yeah. well. Um, but some say they're terrible at business or even marketing. As a startup, how, how did you survive? Um, I mean, one of the first things that you must know is that uh, don't believe you can do it on your own. Ask for help. Um, I, I took a cue from all the successful startups that I see in the world today. Most of them have co-founders. Most of them have people who partner with them. And even when you look at the ones here doing very well in Nigeria, most of them, they, they do have those partnerships. And so I believe it's something that we need. Um, GCL is always trying to help uh, startups 
with those kind of uh, benefits and partnerships will take you they will, they will let you see things that you gen generally do not see on your own people with a different point of view would allow you to see such things has there been a you know perhaps significant role of um, mentorship in your yes. line well um, in GCL Hope we provide all sorts of uh, men mentorship pro programs we just started uh, the, girl, um, the, the girls in tech program. Um, that's a program that is being. Uh, we've partnered now with Code Lagos. We've partnered with Ministry of Education District Four. There are a lot of projects that we are very passionate about mentorship. For, for instance, in the girls in tech, we are trying to uh, mentor ladies, young ladies in secondary schools, inspire okay. them that okay, yes, we know the role of a woman in life and things like that. But in tech. There are a lot of creative things that women can do for us. There are a lot of creative things that women can do, and so from getting them at the young age in secondary school, we begin to mentor. We begin to mentor them as they progress in life. Tiffany, in one sentence, what's been the challenge? Uh, I mean, there are a lot of challenges. Yeah, but uh, in one sentence, we can just say that. Um, we need support from the private sector. We need the private sector to support us, not just the big companies like Dangote, Globalcom. We need our own people to patronize us. It's not going to be easy. I mean, a lot of companies, they are not doing what we, we expect them to do. But when we have the private sector, that's you and I patronizing our own very own startups here, that will take Nigeria and take our startups to, to the next level. All right. Tech expert, Olali Pupa Debore, thank you for joining thank you us on the program. Thank you for having me. Hundreds of artifacts dating back to the Ptolemaic and Islamic periods were put on display at the Egyptian Museum in the heart of Cairo more than one month after they were confiscated by the Italian authorities. The relics date back to different eras and dynasties of ancient Egyptian history. Ancient Egyptian artifacts that were recently returned after being smuggled to Italy are now put on display at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo in a temporary exhibition. Early in May, Italian authorities seized a collection of parcels stolen from illegal excavations. The displayed collection includes 19,000 coins dating back to the Greco-Roman period, 151 small statues, as well as 175 artifacts. <laughs> The odd thing is that all the retrieved artifacts belong to different ages and are made out of different material. This poses the question about the time taken by the gang to find these artifacts. This shows that the members of the gang are very well organized. They moved across Egypt from the north to the south to get these artifacts. Thank God they were returned to their country. You have rare artifacts like coins from the Ptolemy II era. According to the director of the Egypt Museum, Sabah Abdul Razek, some artifacts required restoration, but most relics remained intact. Antiquities theft has flourished in Egypt in the recent years that followed the 2011 uprising, robbing the ancient civilization of an indeterminate amount of heritage stolen from museums, mosques, storage facilities, and illegal excavations. The relic was not broken, but parts of it were separated, and the museum's restoration department managed to restore it. There was also a bronze statue of one of the gods whose leg was separated and it was renovated. We showcased some of these artifacts before renovation, and they showed the impact after the restoration. Egypt has recovered thousands of artifacts to date, but it faces a struggle to get back all that has been lost. There is no exact record of the antiquities that have gone missing. Many were taken from illegal digs, and there is no way to know that they even exist. And that's the program this week. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.